Let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the controversial declaration of Aisha Binani Dahiru, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, as winner of the Adamawa State gubernatorial election before the coalition of results in the state were concluded on Sunday. Social media was awash with reactions after a video showing Hudu Yunisa Ari, the resident electoral commissioner, made the declaration to the dismay of opposition agents. No, 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 Following the announcement, the APC governorship candidate delivered an acceptance speech while crowds of supporters tripped out to congratulate the illegally declared winner. Mama Zidiri Oyoyo! Mama Zidiri Oyoyo! Adama stands tall on the threshold of history. My dear Adama state citizens and residents, I am overwhelmed and humbled by your show, by your show of love and confidence in electing me to serve as your governor as from May 29 this year and for the next four years. For this, I say a very big thank you. Well, spokespersons of the All Progressives Congress, Festus Kiamo also congratulated Binani after the declaration. Kiamo took to his official Twitter page to describe Aisha's victory as a glass-shattering watershed for Nigerian women. Well, his tweet reads, Just woke up in the U.S. to this wonderful news. I am screaming my head off here. This is such a glass-shattering watershed for the women of Nigeria. Huge congratulations to my sister, Senator Aisha Tu Dahiru Ahmed Binani. At a point in the struggle, we were speaking like a dozen times a day on the phone. Special thanks to all those who worked so hard for this. Special thanks to the good people of Adamawa State for smashing this hoodoo of gender bias. Special thanks to the APC for making this possible. Special thanks to President Muhammad Buhari for providing such sterling leadership. Special thanks to Nigerians for your support and prayers. Now, for the women of Nigeria, please go ye forth. To conquer. I mean, that would be that. I, mean, I can see you um, rolling your eyes. But it would have been a perfect speech if she actually was the winner. I mean, it really would have been yes. amazing. But I mean, this is the issue with the spokespeople. I know you always have issues with the <laughs> spokespeople, especially from the APC. But in the meanwhile, the INEC rec. Hidu Yunisa Ari is reported to have been paid huge sums of money to rig the gubernatorial election in Adamawa State in a video that made the rounds on social media on Sunday. An alleged senior DSS official who was apprehended by some young people at City Green Hotels in Yola stated that he was told to give the REC about 2 billion naira to rig the election. Well, meanwhile, a professor Abdullahi Abdul Zuru, the present INEC Commissioner Northwest and former Vice Chancellor of Usman Damfodio University Sokoto and Federal University of Technology MENA, who was sent to Adamawa State as part of INEC's supervisory activities, was attacked by a mob who mistook him for the Adamawa State wreck, Barista Hudi Yunisa Ari, for illegally returning Aisha Dahi Rubinani as governor elect. Now, just wear your trousers, wear your trousers. Now, over 60 years now. Now, Baba. 
Oui, c'est frustrating to yes. watch. I mean, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, really? This man Such has been an disgraced. Yes, but this is disgrace. so unfair that this happened to this man. And why? Because INEC dropped the ball again. Well, Ayo, please, your comment. Yes, INEC dropped, dropped the ball royally in Adamawa State over the weekend, as within other states, because um, there are 24 states where supplementary elections were held over the weekend. But Adamawa State is in the spotlight because of what a number of people have described as a naked dance in the marketplace, a royal show of shame, um, the highlight of the drama amongst dramas that have occurred in the elections this year, and um, INEC not being ready, as they assured Nigerians, on, you know, on, in, in the days leading to the elections. But well, speaking to Professor Zuru, yes, INEC was complicit. INEC was, I mean, not complicit, but INEC can be looked at as not producing a, um, an election that people can write to him about. However, it is no justification for people to take matters into their own hands and beat up a man who then turns out to be innocent, such that they stripped him of his dignity, stripped him of his, um, you know, of, of any sense of, of dignity, really. As we were speaking earlier on to um, Mr. Osaze Uzi, um, earlier on, he had talked about the fact that this is even a discouragement for people who, because this is a professor, a former um, um, VC of a university, who has been so disgraced nationally in this way and in this manner. He's been summoned to the INEC office um, in, in this morning alongside the REC who announced the legal results. And going back to the earlier, um, what you had mentioned earlier on, let me speak to, because I know Doctor um, would speak to the illegality of what was done on Saturday. But let me speak to um, Mr. Festus Keyamo and Senator Binani. First of all is that Senator Binani must have known that Number one, results were not fully collated. Therefore, they shouldn't have called Absolutely. on a winner. Second of all, that the person who announced her as winner was not legally or constitutionally, uh, uh, you know, um, there was no constitutional provision for him to announce her as winner. So, illegal on all fronts. Therefore, she coming out very quickly to give a, you know, an acceptance speech in itself is very suspect. And the fact that she's a serving senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, so she should know better. It just demonstrates the fact that Politicians in Nigeria, unfortunately, are desperate for power enough to not mind the process or whether it's legal or, legal or illegal, the fact that they just announced and then any, anything you want to do, the very famous um, saying, go to court, is what they would just announce me and let everybody else go to court. And then I feel very sad as a woman because it puts a blight yes, on what absolutely. a number of people have said should be a process where women around Nigeria should be very you know, um, jubilant about the fact that we could potentially produce the first elected female governor of a state a northern state for that matter in Nigeria. It rubbishes the process and it almost takes away the shine of that golden moment. And then Mr. Festus Kayamo, as an essay and a senior advocate of Nigeria, a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a, a, you know, a man who is learned by every sense, in every sense and by every word, coming out to celebrate and, um, you know, and, and talk about an illegality in itself is one that he should probably delete his, Insta <laughs> his Twitter handle and not tweet for a while. It Twitter is disgraceful. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it is quite disgraceful yeah. and a lot more is expected from him absolutely we've seen a lot of these actually i mean this is i, I think it's still up there uh, dr bati well just to say this uh, first was keamo allowed his emotions to get ahead of him he could give the excuse that he was in the uh, u.s different time zones because he had been cited at the uh, spring yeah, meetings that's what he said. of the imf that's what he said in the tweets Bank. yeah and, uh, you know, maybe because of time difference, he probably did not know what was going on exactly at home. Uh, the excitement that he has shown, if the uh, lady had actually won, it would have been properly uh, placed. After all, there were many other persons, even during the initial election that was inconclusive, uh, who had already started congratulating her. Yes. But Festus Kiyamu, having now been fully apprised of the situation, and given his status as a legal practitioner, one would have expected that 24 hours later, uh, he would have deleted that particular tweet. I wouldn't say his entire uh, Twitter account, but that particular tweet. But I checked, it is still there. <laughs> and that is what even makes it, uh, you know, uh, really embarrassing. 
Now, the second uh, issue about uh, Mrs. Aisha Dahiru. I think Mrs. Aisha Dahiru, popularly known as Binani, owes the people of Adamawa State, and indeed the people of Nigeria, an apology for delivering an acceptance speech that may not work eventually when the entire process is concluded. Because as at the point, the collation center uh, said, uh, went on recess and said they would reconvene at 11. The Fintry, the candidate of the uh, People's Democratic Party, was leading with 31,496 votes in seven out of the 10 local governments that had been declared so far. There were still 10 local government areas uh, to be declared. And the uh, candidate of the APC, uh, having our own, uh, you know, uh, uh, agents, party agents at the collation center, uh, could not have pretended that she wasn't aware that that process had not been concluded. So what do we say to all of this? There is need for investigation, thorough investigation of what happened and allegations that money exchange hands and all of that will require investigation, thorough investigation. Now, having done the investigations, we'll expect that persons should be sanctioned. The uh, Uduari, the resident ele electoral commissioner who went and engaged in this act of impunity, has been told to report to the INEC headquarters in Abuja. But another report has said that he is at large. I think he should be immediately declared a wanted person if he does not show up. Because, as I have pointed out earlier on this uh, program, you know, there are so many infractions of the law with specific penalties prescribed in the Electoral Act under Section 120, Subsection 4. And also, uh, if you check the uh, Criminal Code, Section 294, you are not allowed to, to cause a breach of the public peace. It caused a breach of public peace. Yes. And it caused damages. Absolutely. And that takes me to the uh, uh, professor, the national commissioner. I think INEC should learn his own lessons from here. Uh, better protection should be provided for INEC officials on the field. Uh, the professor, uh, Professor Zulu, he was not uh, he was not even at the place where the uh, crime was uh, co uh, committed, but he was the one that uh, aggrieved persons so Very and they said, oh, this is uh, the INEC man, and they subjected him to bodily harm. Even if it was Udu Hari, uh, the alleged offender uh, that was uh, apprehended, we do not recommend jungle justice. Jungle justice is, una is unacceptable. Nobody should be subjected to extrajudicial punishment. So that is the point there. And INEC has issued a statement to say that they're going to take up the matter and ensure that the security agencies prosecute the persons who are responsible for the assault on that uh, former vice chancellor. However, the security agencies themselves are part of the problem. Yeah. Was it not a DSS official that you showed in that video uh, who was being uh, uh, queried? Was it not the uh, police commissioner and other policemen who were reported to have uh, provided protection for Uduari, the man who illegally announced a, a result. So this is the problem. There should be a general probe. And it's not just INEC, the Inspector General of Police, the other security agencies should ensure that uh, you know people who have tried to derail the process are brought to book. And finally, INEC must show good faith in ensuring that the process is concluded. Yeah. We cannot have double inconclusive election whether in Adamawa or elsewhere, the due process should continue and the properly, validly elected person should be duly announced. And all the stakeholders in Adamawa should be advised that the entire country is watching them and that we do not want the kind of impunity, the kind of criminality, the kind of desperation that we have seen in uh, in uh, Adamawa. The only people that will gain from this will probably be the people in Nollywood who would uh, find this very good stuff <laughs> for future entertainment. I mean, I can't even describe it as entertainment. It is quite shocking, very embarrassing. I'm embarrassed as a Nigerian for this to be happening. I mean, there is clear indication. That we have videos. We have that DSS, uh, alleged DSS officer who said that, you know, who claimed that 
he billion was naira. paid two billion naira, naira, and then we're still here. No one's been apprehended at this point. Well, you know, in the same vein, reports indicating that the candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, won the February 25th presidential election in Obiokbo, local government area of River State. According to reports uploaded on the INEC results viewing portal, IREV has made rounds on social media. Ayo, Dr. Abati, this same report. I mean, we are having the same information about INEX. Um, what would I even call, call it at this point? I don't even know what, what to use to describe INEX. Is, is it ineptitude? Corruption? <laughs> I mean, so many what things. can we use to describe INEC at this point? There is reports of rigging in River State. I mean, the numbers are huge. I don't know if you saw that report. And then we are not even hearing anything at this point from INEC. Why is Adamawa State different from River State, Dr. Abati? Well, I mean, in this particular case, this uh, part, uh, report from uh, Obiwakpo uh, local government, by the way, that's the local government area of the governor yes. of River State, and also from Degema, uh, is the uh, you know, report of uh, investigation carried out by Premium Times, yes. you know, uh, a newspaper. And what Premium Times did was to just uh, tabulate the report, compare yeah. what is reported in the INEC reporting uh, 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 portal, IREV, IREV, with, you know, what was announced on Election Day. And they pointed out discrepancies uh, in that regard. So you, you, you give them credit for investigating Absolutely. journalism. Absolutely. However, the matter of the election has gone to the tribunal. Yes. Petitions have been filed. Cross petitions have been uh, filed. So the evidence that is available is now for the lawyers to present before the presidential election petition tribunal. But I always say it, in election matters, what is required is substantial compliance. Right. So once INEC can prove substantial compliance, well, that's where you know, the fireworks uh, will okay. probably begin. Well, all right. We shall